Hey, what's up everyone? This week I have something different than usual for you because I want to try out a new format called a challenge. The concept behind this challenge is pretty simple. I set out a goal that I want to achieve and I actually try to achieve it during the video. But the big difference with my regular videos is that this time I haven't prepared any code at all in advance. So I will have to figure out how to achieve the goal while recording the video, which should make things a little bit more exciting than usual. And for this very first challenge, I thought it would be pretty cool to give a try to the new Swift chart framework. So I went to my YouTube dashboard and downloaded some data from the analytics. That data is right here. And as you can see, is the number of views on my videos for the last 28 days. And so what I want to do with this data is to display it in a nice looking chart using the new Swift chart framework. And for this, I will have two tools at my disposal. The first one is of course Xcode 13 beta. And the second one is the actual documentation of the Swift chart framework. And so now it's time for me to get started and actually try to implement that chart. So I've been browsing the documentation and it seems the first thing I need to do is to use a view called chart. So I'm going to go back to my code. I'm going to import the package chart and I'm going to use this view called chart. So just after in the docs, they show us an example of what we can put inside a chart. And here they are using something called a bar mark, which seems to create that kind of chart. So it's nice, but it's not exactly what I want because I don't want to have a bar chart, but rather a line chart. So for that, I'm going to take a look inside the components and see if there is something that is closer to it. And it seems that indeed there is something called a line mark. So let me scroll a bit to see how I can use it. This looks more like what I want to implement. Actually, this is almost exactly what I want to implement because I have a series of data and in the X axis I have some dates and in the Y axis I have numerical values. And so the way it seems to work is that I pass in the data to my chart and then uh, I create a line mark for each data. So let me try to implement this. So I'm going to pass the data as an argument to my chart. So I have an error because I need to add an argument to the closure. So I'm going to call it data point like this. Now I have another error because my model does not conform to identifiable. So let me go back to the code of my model. Here I could either add an ID like a UUID, but when you take a look at the model, we could say that the date is already kind of an ID because like there are no two elements in my array that share the same date. So I'm going to go back to my chart. I'm going to see if there is an init where I can pass in a key path, you know, just like when you are using, for instance, a, a list in Swift UI. And so if I can pass a key path to the date, let's see if this time it builds. Okay, it builds successfully. Okay, now let's create the actual element that the chart will display. So the type we want to use is called line mark. So like this, the init takes two arguments, so X and Y, and they are of type plotable value. So I'm going to go back to the doc real quick just to see how it was implemented. Okay, so for both arguments, we're using this static member value and we pass in like uh, the name of the series, I guess, and then the actual data. So it's going to look like this. So value, so here is going to be a day. Uh, no, not like this. I want to use double quotes. So the value will be data point dot date. And for the Y axis, so value once again, this time it will be the number of views and the value to plot will be data point dot views. Okay, let's see whether this builds. Okay, it seems to build. So actually, I'm going to try and run this code in the simulator and we're going to see what it displays. Okay, so as you can see, that's already pretty nice because we can see our chart being displayed here on screen. We can see the axis. We can see that the axis are already annotated with some values. So let's see what we could improve. Maybe we could try and see if we can gain more control over the axis. As you can see here, the interval is every seven days and here it's every 500 views. And I would like to see if I could change it. Maybe display like uh, every single day on the X axis and maybe do a jump every, uh, I don't know, like uh, 250 views on the Y axis. So for this, I'm going to go back to the docs. So here they're talking about multi-series line mark, but that's not what I want to achieve right here. So actually I should look not for marks, but rather for things about um, like uh, the labels. 
Okay, so this might be what we are looking for. So this thing called axis marks dot values, because if I take a look in the init, so here we can set something called a minimum stride. And so this is what we are looking for, uh, how to set the interval between two labels on the axis. So let's see how I could use this in my code. And so here's what the code looks like. I'm calling the modifier chart x axis on my chart. And inside I'm saying that I want to have axis marks that are going to stride my values by each day. And so if I launch the code in the simulator, let's see what it looks like. So we are getting there, but this isn't actually very legible because there isn't enough room to display the labels for each day. So I'm going to see if I can maybe make it fit by only displaying the number of the day. So there is a bit more code this time, but as you can see, I now have complete control over how the x-axis is being drawn, meaning that I say explicitly, I want to draw a grid line, I want to draw a tick, and I want to draw this label for the value. And here for the label, I am explicitly saying that I only want to display the day in question. And so I'm going to run my code once again, and we're going to see how this new code looks like. And indeed, this time I have what I wanted to achieve. So I'm only displaying the number of the day on the x-axis. So that was for the x-axis. Now let's try to do the same thing for the y-axis. And the code should be somewhat similar, but I guess it's going to be a little bit different because the units are not the same. On the x-axis, it was about days. And on the y-axis, it's about numerical values. So for now, I'm trying to use the same strategy. So this time I use the modifier chart y-axis. I'm trying to use an axis marks inside it. So this is what the new code looks like. Once again, pretty similar to what we had on the x-axis, except that this time we're saying we want to try by 250 views. So let's run this code and see if it works as expected. Okay, so that's perfect. It has worked as expected. Now on the y-axis, I have a label being displayed every 250 units. So this is already looking pretty good, but there is one more thing that I would like to add to this chart. I would like to add a line that would display the average amount of views per day. This way I could easily see which days were above average and which days were below average. For this, I'm first going to have to add an extra method in my code in order to be able to compute that average number of views per day. So I have added this small piece of code inside my model to compute the average. And now all I have to do is to actually use it to display it on the chart. And it should be pretty easy to display it because I actually went over the code that will do it when I was browsing the doc earlier. So you can see it's right here. So here we have the example of that rule mark being used and the code is right here. So we need to use the type rule mark in order to implement this line that will show the average number of views per day. So I'm going to go back to my code and I'm going to implement it. So I'm back inside the body of my chart. I'm going to add a rule mark. I need to give it a value. So in my case, it's the value for the axis Y. And so just like I did for the line mark, I use the static member value. So this time the label will be average and the value. So it will be uh, my average. Okay, so the code seems to be good. I'm just going to add one thing, which is to have the foreground color being red. Just like in the example, this way it will be easy to see if it has worked or not. Okay, so everything is looking pretty great. We can indeed see the red line on the chart. So that red line right here is what corresponds to my rule mark in my code. And the way that red line displays seems to be pretty consistent with the data because the red line is supposed to represent the average number of views my videos get per day. And we can see that indeed the parts of the week that are above average are centered around Tuesdays. So when I release my new videos and the parts of the week that are below average are the end of the weeks and the weekend, which makes sense given that my videos are work related. I'm going to stop here for this video. I think we can all agree that the goal I had set for myself in this first challenge has been achieved. I hope you've enjoyed this new format. I can tell you I definitely had some fun while recording it. If you want to experiment with the code I wrote, you have a link in the description to download it. As always, if you have any feedback, questions, or maybe ideas for other challenges, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you next time.